Okay, uh, question five and the SL paper, or question number six in the HL paper. This is a beam of microwaves is instant normally on a pair of identical narrow slits S1 and S2. When a microwave receiver is initially placed at W, there is, which is equidistant from the slits, a maximum in intensity is, in, is observed. The receiver is then moved towards Z along a line parallel to the slits. Intensity maxima are observed at X and Y and one minimum between them. W, X and Y are consecutive maxima. That means that there's no other maxima in between these, just W, X and Y. So explain why intensity maxima are observed at X and Y. Well, the first thing we need to say is that these two waves are constructively interfering. There are other ways of saying this. You could say they superpose or that there's superposition. But as long as you say something along those lines, that's fine for the first mark. And that will give you one point. The second part to say is that there are two waves arrive in phase. Now, we know what that means. That means that if you have one wave in green, and you have another wave in purple, that the peaks line up with the peaks, and the troughs line up with the troughs. Okay? Doesn't mean that they have no path difference, but they are in phase. So uh, there are, again, other ways of saying this. You could say that they have a path difference of a whole number of wavelengths, or an integer number of wavelengths, but in phase is probably the quickest way to say it. And part B, the distance S1 to Y is 0.243 and S2 to Y is 1.181 meters. So we're looking at these distances here and here. And we can imagine that the extra distance that the ray from S1 has traveled is this edge right here. So for this to be a maxima at Y, which we're told it is, what do we know about this distance here? Well, we know that it has to be n lambda, where n is an integer. Now we can do a bit better than that, because we know that at w, the path difference between these two will be zero, because they've both traveled, if you like, down an isosceles triangle. At x, we know they're in phase again, because we have a maxima. So here, the path difference will be the first time they go back in phase, and that will be uh, one lambda's worth of extra distance is the yellow line. Why? They're back in phase again. So this will be 2 lambda uh, will be the path difference between the two rays. So equal 2 lambda. Uh, and that's only for the rays arriving at position y. So if we go back to our question, we can see that the path difference is 1.243 take away 1.181 and we know that that path difference is equal to 2 lambda oops let me try that again the path difference is equal to 2 lambda now this value comes to 0.062 meters so lambda is going to be 0.62 divided by this 2 here and that's equal to 0.031 meters. So there's our answer. And we get one mark for identifying the path difference is 0.62. That's a mark. And we get one mark for the wavelength being 0.031. Now we want to find the frequency. So here we're going to use the wave equation. And we're going to say that V equals F lambda. Uh, in fact, because these are microwaves, we can call it C, which is the speed of light. And lambda is here. So we can write 3 times 10 to the 8 equals F times by 0 0.031. I'm running out of space slightly. Apologies for that. Uh, that gives us a value of F for F equals 9.7 times 10 to the 9 hertz. 
and that is our third marking point. Okay, outline one reason why the maxima observed at W and X, or Y and Z, sorry, W, X and Y, will have different intensities from one another. Okay, just a one mark question. So quite simply, we just say that intensity varies with distance. And you can see, hopefully, that the rays have had to travel further to Y and less distance to W. So we'd expect to see a lower intensity at Y because of that.